Hello, everyone. Uh, I've heard that you're all the Willy Wonka winners, so you're probably uh, feeling quite smug sitting here while all your friends are working in the office. Okay, so let's get the elephant out of the room. I know what you're thinking. I can feel the tension. Don't feel sorry for me. Yes, I am from, from Essex. <laughs> Hello, welcome. My name is Ian Traherne. I am profoundly deaf, 95% blind, and a portrait photographer, and an ambassador for a charity called Sense UK in London. I am here today as I would like to change your idea of blind people and eradicate your fear of the white cane and have a better understanding of what blind means to you. We are people, not aliens. We come in peace. <laughs> Quite cool. I was born profoundly deaf, diagnosed aged two months old, and have been wearing hearing aids ever since. Having lost my higher frequencies, I coped the best I could with the difficulties of isolation and not hearing very well. I went to a normal primary school and a secondary school and fitted in with the regular kids and had many friends. I thought my hearing loss was the only major issue I would have to contend with as a child. When I was out with my friends as a young teenager, riding my bike and playing in the woods, I noticed that I could not see as well as my friends. This led to me visiting an optician and later a hospital where I would be told, age 15, that my eyesight is deteriorating with a genetic condition called retina pigmentosa type 2 Usher syndrome, quite a mouthful, or RP for short, and he's also known as tunnel vision. This is an image of a healthy eye, what a fully sighted person would see. And this is what I see with retina pigmentosa with 5% vision. As you can see, it's quite a dramatic loss of sight. The peripheral vision that I have lost is black, and I have a tiny window of around 5% reasonable clear sight in the middle. My vision at night time drops down dramatically down to 1% to 2%. The small remaining sight I have is my window and how I navigate through life. I hid my blindness for many years because I felt ashamed and embarrassed because of the stigma attached to disabilities. I found when I was growing up, I noticed the lack of representation of disabled people on TV and entertainment. Usually the characters were portrayed as weak, very incapable or the butt of a joke. Over the last few years, the internet and the Paralympics have empowered a positive start in image diversity representation in the media, sports and entertainment. It has pushed large corporate brands to start showing different disabilities, changes and ranges of diverse people in the media, which is a positive start. This is not to do with vanity, just simply demanding our place of acknowledgement and existence in the world as people. With all the diverse adverts I have seen recently, which I add are awesome, Blind people are still not being shown. Why is that? Are we that scary? <laughs> scary monsters. <laughs> I didn't come out using my white cane because I wanted you to meet me first. This is my white cane. I feel like a ninja when I do that. <laughs> Um, I have been a white cane user since January 2018 and it has been one of the hardest things I've had to do in my life. Over the last year and a half of using the white cane, I have discovered many issues, positive and negative. Every blind person that chooses to use a white cane, use it in different ways. Some people use guide dogs and many choose not to use the white cane. But the white cane will always represent the same symbol, that they either have a visual impairment or a visual impairment and hearing loss. The white cane is there for you to be aware and to act accordingly to give them space. I thought I'd share some examples of how I use the white cane. If I'm in a, a busy place, say like London, I would use it 
waving it left to right to create some space. It usually works most of the time, not always in London. And I thought about putting a taser on the end. <laughs> <laughs> it might make people think. <laughs> Often I use it as a hiking stick and use it as just a symbol and it's a lot easier to use as we do have a, very, a lot of dodgy pavement where we live, but it's a lot easier for me to use. And also I use my white cane when I come out of the gym after a leg day and I use it to prop myself up. <laughs> and when I'm wobbling down the stairs, it's very helpful, it's very useful. And a lot of times I don't use the white cane because I like to keep working my residing site. This small window of site is a gift and I will continue to use that site, even if the constant judgmental stares and quizzical looks continue because I'm not conforming to the stereotypical idea of being blind, which we are changing today, right? Uh, some basic useful tips when you see a blind person in public. Don't panic. <laughs> Breathe. All you need to do is give them some room. That is it. Nothing more simple. You don't need to risk your life crossing busy main roads. We are not zombies from the walking dead. Don't be frightened. A bit like me on a Friday night. <laughs> also, try to avoid jumping over the white cane like a show horse pony. <laughs> also, don't grab and drag a blind person around like a rag doll because you think we are helpless. We do get stuck, but don't we all? A blind person will often ask for help if should they need it. The biggest misconception and misplaced idea of what blind mean is that you either see or have zero vision. This big confusion is what causes the judgmental stares and quizzical looks from sighted people. Why is that person with the white cane using a phone? Why is that person with a guide dog reading a book if they can't see? Why is that blind person using a camera? They must be faking it. There are over 500 eye disorders that exist in the world. Only a few have a cure. My condition, RP Usher syndrome, does not have a cure and is at early stages of trials and experiments. We have a long way to go yet. Often when I tell people there is no cure, they find this very difficult to accept and offer tips such as, have I tried glasses? <laughs> I get that a lot. I tried, no, it doesn't work. So what does blind mean? Blind means partial loss, severe loss, and total loss. I'll say that again. Blind means partial loss, severe loss, and total loss. As I've mentioned, the most common stereotypical idea of blindness is that people think blind means having zero vision. This could not be further from the truth for the majority of blind people. It has been revealed by RNIB, Royal National Institute for the Blind, that 93% blind people in the UK, me included, have some form of residing vision. And 7% have zero vision. The stereotype of blindness is based on the red 7%. Terrifying to think that a perception is based on a very small percentage of people. The 93% of people have partial or severe loss. This is why the perception of blindness needs to be modernized and brought into the 2020s. There are over 2 million people in the UK right now living with some form of eye blindness that has a significant impact on their daily lives and is predicted to double to 4 million by 2050. I have always been a creative person from a young age and experiencing the isolation that comes with profound deafness, I was able to keep myself occupied with drawing, painting, 
and eventually leading me to discover the mechanical bot called a camera. From the moment I was told I'm going blind, I had this sense of urgency to see as much as possible, photograph and collect as many images and memories before the curtains are drawn permanently. My photography is inspired by cinema, music, literature, and working predominantly in black and white. Photography is about many ideas in one moment being captured. Light, texture, materials, and atmosphere all play a pivotal role in the final image. This is called The Dead Tree, and it's a long exposure photo. It's my favorite tree because it's dead. <laughs> but I find it beautiful. There's uh, life in death, so I found. This is Matthew. He's a, a musician and a teacher. You can probably tell by his uh, jacket. <laughs> um, but he's an also, uh, awesome musician. This is Liverpool Street. I tried to capture it as being very calming, the sort of place that you want to be. But let's face it, we all know Liverpool Street is a blinking nightmare. <laughs> uh, another musician, Nicky. I'm a big fan of clothes, texture, shadow, contrast. Um, a protest in London, trying to capture the essence of the protest which was very sad. Portrait of Flo, who is actually a puppet maker. And this is all to do with my sort of Victorian-esque sort of love for photography. And this is an actor, but also a carer. And this is Dungeness, a uh, Dungeness boat. Anyone that's been to Dungeness would know it's quite a surreal, unusual place, um, but amazing to photograph. Lisa Stansfield, a vocalist, still touring, still recording music. A gypsy from Berlin. I caught her begging for money, but I was just very inquisitive and intrigued by her as a person. Another actor, and this is an image that almost represents my eyesight in a lot of ways. My setup in the studio is very simple, using just a single light, ranging from soft boxes, which have a continuous light, or I use flash gun and an umbrella. The light is what sets the scene, and in sets the scene and mood in my images. I'm just going to have a swig of water. It's a bit weird having everyone staring at you while you're drinking your water. Um, photographing people and landscapes, I'm able to work with light, contrast and shadow, capturing the atmosphere and vision for my mind's eye. Photography has enabled me to participate in the world and connect with really interesting people and visit fascinating destinations to add to my collection of memories to reflect later on in life. My photography and ambassador work has led me to collaborate with a newly formed casting agency in the UK called Zebedee Management, a specialist casting agency for disabled people only, children and adults with diverse challenging disabilities ranging from skin condition, Down syndrome, albinoism, cerebral palsy, prosthetic limbs, and blind people, representing a range of cool, talented individuals. I didn't take these photos, by the way. Harry has already been in a campaign with River Island and is becoming a well-known model. Plus, I want that coat. I'm looking forward to working with Zebedee and creating new beautiful imagery next year. Everybody has something to offer, whether it is creatively, academically, athletically or spiritually, everybody deserves to participate. You don't need degrees, PhDs, expertise, just the desire to be open-minded. 
So let's build this better place we envision, an environment that is catered for everyone, show our beautiful, diverse people to the world, and let those fears of blind people disappear today. And importantly, appreciate the gift of sight you have been given. Thank you. Your light-hearted approach to such a powerful um, and impactful topic is incredible. So thank you for sharing your Welcome. journey with us. So you teamed up with Zebedee. Um, what are you looking to achieve by working with them? Uh, coming across Zebedee um, last year um, has enabled me to you know, work with people that have the same mission as me. Um, I really want to push the boundaries with the way that we advertise in the media because we know that social media in you know, every aspect has a huge effect on people. And I really want to start including all the diverse range of people. Um, I think it's our right to be included. And let's face it, we, we all are people living on this round rock and we need to just get involved and uh, just be included really. Thank you. No worries, Thanks. thank you. <laughs> Thank you.